All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to talk about that major tropical cyclone that's likely going to be developing there in the Gulf of Mexico, rapidly intensifying as it approaches the United States Gulf Coast. Very concerning situation. We're gonna go over all the information we have at this point. Anyways, before I get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I would also like to remind you guys that just a few days ago, we released our third winter forecast. Just for those of you that have not seen that yet, I'm going to leave a link up on the top right corner of your screen. You can click that and it'll take you over there where you can see our precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, even our snowfall forecast, and then as well as our overall forecast, which is basically this screen you're seeing here without the question marks, but words instead. So if you want to reveal what's on this screen right now, you can go over Check that out, and it's at the end of the video. A lot of you have been enjoying that one. I don't want anybody to miss out, so be sure to check that out today if you are interested. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, what do you think is this one's maximum intensity it ends up reaching? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Don't forget to smash that like button. Let's get straight into things. And first things first, we're taking a look here at our five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, where we now have two code reds there, as you can see, one of which is our storm that is heading in through the southern caribbean into the gulf of mexico we also have our one up there in the middle of the north atlantic which doesn't expect to have any land impacts which is obviously very very good news we also have a code yellow down there uh, which basically was our mdr or main development region storm uh, but now it has obviously gone down in odds and we have the most question marks with that system i think out, out of any of them here is the percentages on screen. We're going to go over that one first, actually. 30% chance of development with this one. This one did have, I think, a 50 or maybe a 40 or a 60. I forget which percentage it was uh, just a couple of days ago. So this percentage has gone down, but I'm going to show you guys why I think this one actually could develop uh, in just a little bit. Here is our second disturbance, the one up there in the middle of the North Atlantic. And this one has an 80% chance of development at this point. Uh, so this one is likely going to develop actually quite shortly as well. Uh, and then here is our Gulf and Caribbean system, which has a 90% chance of development. So this one is pretty much going to develop. Uh, it has very favorable conditions. Here was our main development region system. The first one we showed the, um, the percentage forecast for. And this was just a few hours ago, maybe about 1 a.m., this morning and look it looked like a cluster of small isolated thunderstorms and then we move on towards when i'm making this video just about five hours after that first frame and as you can see this one has dramatically intensified over the past five hours and if it continues heading in this direction i think the odds of it developing will go up now we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery for the one in the middle of the Atlantic and then our Gulf system in just a second and then we will go over spaghetti model guidance and intensity guidance in just a moment. All right, now here is our one in the middle of the Atlantic as of about 1 a.m. And as you can see, it looked like about one small thunderstorm there pretty similar to the first one we just went over. Uh, but as we move towards five hours after that point, you can see this one is also dramatically intensified over the past five hours. So that is the trend with both of these, uh, that these ones have definitely dramatically intensified and really just turned things around over the past five hours. Now here is our one that you're probably clicking this video for, our Gulf and Caribbean system. And I'm not showing the five hours increment, the one five hours ago and then the one now because it hasn't really dramatically intensified uh, or decreased in intensity. It's really just sitting pretty stable right now. I think it's having a lot of land interaction there with Jamaica uh, and a tiny bit with Haiti there as well. And as this one heads towards Cuba and uh, the Yucatan Peninsula, it'll only tell us uh, more as we move further into the future, uh, we're going to need to see if it's going to move through the water in between those two areas or if there will be uh, a lot of land interaction there with either of those two regions. We're going to have to see again in the future what this one holds. But for now, uh, it looks like regardless, it's going to dramatically intensify as it heads into the Gulf, whether there's land interaction before or not. Uh, this one is really going to head into some favorable conditions. And we do anticipate a hurricane out of this one at this point, at least um, and it's going to head straight for the Gulf Coast of the United States, likely Louisiana, but possibly Texas, possibly uh, Mississippi or Alabama, and you can't even rule out Florida. 
So really anywhere is at risk at this point, but Louisiana seems to be the most likely spot. And I'm telling you guys this not to not to worry anybody, uh, but really just so that you can prepare as early as possible. There's preparations you can do before you know for sure if it's going to hit, if you know what I mean. There's some things you can buy that you're going to use anyway. That's the type of stuff you want to go ahead and start grabbing now. Obviously, if you don't use it now, you'll use it later anyway. Uh, if, if you want to evacuate potentially, if a hurricane is going to hit, uh, you want to start making those preparations as early as possible because you can always cancel as well. That type of stuff, guys, that can be done earlier, you're going to want to start planning now. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about spaghetti model guidance. This is our main development region, Storm, and as you can see, this one is expected to basically curve northward and then really not interact with any land over the next 168 hours. Uh, so that's very good news, obviously. Again, I think this one likely has more chance of development than what's being shown on the National Hurricane Center's five-day outlook right now, but I don't think it's that much more either. Uh, maybe 30 or 40% chance at this point, just because of the amount it's intensified as of late. Now, here is that uh, intensity guidance, and as you can see, there is some models hopping on board with this one heading towards tropical storm status a little bit later on, within the next 72 or 84 hours. Uh, but really, it's a weaker tropical storm on most of them. Uh, and a dramatic majority here, I would say, keep it below tropical storm status. So it is kind of a low ball thing. Again, 30 40% chance maybe of development. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. There is one model there that just likes to take it straight towards Category 1 and Category 2 status. That is definitely an outlier at this point, but we will watch it closely. In a moment, what we're going to do is we're going to go over that invest in the middle of the Atlantic with the spaghetti model guidance and intensity guidance, and then eventually our golf system as well. All of those things are coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at that one in the middle of the Atlantic, and as you can see, this one as well is not expected to make any land impacts. We do have that one heading towards some of those islands out there in the middle of the Atlantic, uh, but that is one, again, if it's one model out of like 10, that's an outlier. So we're looking at a small percentage chance at that point. It is possible. Anything a model shows you want to pay attention to, that's usually my mentality. A lot of people don't adopt that same mentality that I have, uh, but really I go over all the options. So that's why I'm mentioning that one model that is showing it hit those islands, uh, but it is in the minority at this point. So we're going to watch it closely, but it isn't looking like the biggest chance at this point, which is very good news, obviously. Here's the intensity guidance. This one is expected to at least become a tropical storm, as you can see. And about half of those, I would say there's six models on the screen here, about half of those do take it towards at least Category 1 status. So there's about a 50-50 shot, according to these six models, that this one will become a hurricane. And you know what? Matter of fact, uh, we do have one of those models that isn't on... Uh, it doesn't hit the hurricane status early. It does kind of creep there in that category one status there a little later on, as you can see towards the right hand side of that uh, screen there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of that spaghetti model guidance for our golf system. And here's our GFS ensemble model first off. And I'm, I'm going over all the models for this one. The scary thing here, and I, and I don't mean to frighten anybody, but again, uh, it is a little concerning. We see on the right hand side of that screen, uh, those colors mean something. So those reds mean a stronger storm. Uh, we're talking about 957 millibars, 955, 954, 946, 959. That's all individual models. Uh, we have some that are calling for those uh, those millibar pressures. Uh, and, and really, th those are very low uh, pressure storms that those models are calling for to the point where I think that's, a, that's probably a major hurricane on a couple of those at least, if not all of those ones I just mentioned off. Uh, but for each of those, there's about two that call for a weaker storm. So at this point, I would say there's about a 33% chance of that kind of more major solution. But we're going to watch it closely because as we approach, and especially as this storm moves into the Gulf and it actually gets there, and we can see how quickly it's intensifying, we will have more answers at that point. And that's why I want you guys to stay tuned and be sure to subscribe because I am going to be uploading updates for this storm. Again, like the video and comment as well because I don't just want attention. You know, I'm not just doing that just to do it. Uh, it. There's a reason because the YouTube algorithm sees those likes, it sees those comments, and it decides to suggest this to more people uh, that possibly need to see this information. So I think it's a good thing overall. That's why I always ask you guys to do that because it's the least you can do. As you can see, there is land interaction impacts. I mean, from Southern Texas all the way to the Western tip of the Florida panhandle, but a majority here have this around 
the northern coast of Texas or Louisiana, a majority there in Louisiana. So I think that is kind of the highest probability at this point, but I have seen these types of storms definitely shift quite a bit So before within a couple of days. So we're going to watch this one closely. We can't rule out this track, uh, but we definitely can't say it's for certain as well. Canadian model guidance, this one's usually a little more a little more crazy. It doesn't have as strong of storms, but it does have a lot more possibilities here. Uh, we're just going to show that one just to show it. And then here's the individual models. As you can see, probably about 90% of these showing a Louisiana impact. And then we have a couple taking it towards Texas and one taking it onshore of Mississippi. Obviously, all of these models together could shift east or west, even dramatically. So we're going to not really lock that in yet. Uh, we're more going to watch it closely over the coming days. Here's the intensity guidance quickly. And as you can see, I would say about 50% of these models take it towards hurricane status. And uh, I would say about half of the 50%, so about a quarter of all of these models, take it towards uh, Category 3 and 4 status. So there is just that possibility, like I said before. Um, it is possible at this point. This one could be a stronger tropical storm, and that's kind of its peak. I doubt that with its trajectory. Uh, or it could be on the higher end. It could be a Category 4 um, and, and even a five could never be ruled out, obviously. If you're a, if it's a four, it could easily be a five as well, although they're rare, but uh, it does happen from time to time. These golf storms, guys, don't play with these things. You know what I mean? Like, they can really, really rapidly intensify with those warm golf waters, and you really know, you, you really never know what's going to happen. I've always said that golf is like an oven, and these storms just like to rise like dough. Uh, that's a famous quote, actually. People remind me of it all the time, but it really is true. Uh, that that oven is just so perfect for these storms, uh, just like an oven is perfect for the dough. And I, and I think it's a really good analogy, actually. But people think it's funny, but I'm not even I'm not even joking most of the time. It actually is like a pretty good analogy, in my opinion. Really, this one is kind of frightening because we don't know if it's going to be a mid mid tier tropical storm or a Category Four here. That's what these models are showing a possibility of. Uh, and at this point, nothing can be ruled out. Again, I think this is the same thing. I think we'll know more once this one heads into the Gulf, right as it passes through the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba and it enters into the Gulf. We will know a lot more at that point. Anyway, I'm going to move. I'm just going to close out the video here, guys, because we've been here for 12 and a half minutes so far. And it really just it's going on pretty long. I am going to update you guys on this probably daily over the coming days, and I likely will be going live once the storm is making landfall somewhere. I'm sorry for the New England one that I was not able to do so. Again, I was out of town. I told you guys that a couple days beforehand. I wished more than anything that I could be live for that storm, especially since it was such a rare event. Uh, really missed out on one there, uh, and, and I'm sure you guys got great information somewhere else. I hope so. Uh, so I'm sure everything went okay, but I really wish I could have gone live for that one. For today's confidence tab, though, we're at a four out of six still. There is a lot of question marks still on the table. I do feel confident that this one will be likely a hurricane. I would say there's a good chance of it being a hurricane, and I would say uh, there's a very, very good odd of no matter what intensity this storm is that it is going to hit the United States Gulf Coast. Those are the two things I'm the most confident in. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, where do you think this one will hit and what intensity? And James Barr said, I believe it will impact the United States and it will hit Louisiana as a Category 2. Kind of a bold prediction there, uh, but really it can't really be said. I think that's a good mid-level prediction because, um, you know, two categories above it, it would be a Category 4, and two categories below it, it would be a Tropical Storm. And that's basically where the range is. So a good way to take kind of the middle ground there with a the Category 2. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerla Pan, and Donna Carnez. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Tennant, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crunenthal. If you'd like to be part of this exciting patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.